Hi everybody, it's me Sharon. Um, it's um, Monday, December 9th. Kind of dull and dreary here today, as you can tell. My, my video is a little on the dark side and all my lights are on, but it is dull, dull, dull outside. Um, we did have snow during the night, but the rain came and washed all the snow away, and now it's just uh, wet outside, so hopefully it doesn't get too cold because we don't want to we don't want to turn it into an ice rink out there either. But, um, I haven't been around for a couple of weeks, I'm sorry, I just didn't have anything really to show. Um, haven't, I've done some crocheting and then I frog it, you know, because I don't like the way it turned out. Um, uh, I just haven't seen any patterns that kind of give me that little kick to get started again. Um, but, I have, um, these things are related to crocheting and knitting and whatever. I had a, a coupon for uh, Michael's, a 50% off coupon. And um, uh, I saw a video by Laura. And she did a review on the Voy uh, yarn winding machine, the electric one. And I had wanted one of the hand wind ones, but I couldn't get one here in town. Unfortunately, Michael's doesn't carry it, and in order for me to get it, I'd have to send to the States, and by the time I put um, the the duty on it and um, and shipping charges and everything else, uh, we were looking at about $60 for a hand-wound, hand-winding yarn winder, and I thought, you know, that's an, a lot of money for a, a $15 item. It was costing me, like... <laughs> three times as much as what it actually was worth. So I thought, well, I'll wait, and I'll wait, you know. And I went to uh, Michael's, and they had the electric one, but they were $119.99. <clears throat> so when I got this coupon for 50% off, I thought, oh, now that is, you know, that makes it a little easier. And, of course, with uh, Laura's um, uh, review of it, and, of course, my sister encouraged me to pick one up, so I took my coupon, and down I went to the store, and I picked up this, uh, let me just grab it, this little gizmo. And uh, it cost me, with tax, about $67. Good deal. I mean, if I'm going to spend that much money on a hand-wound one, with the shipping and everything else, I might as well have this one. And it's a good little gizmo. Yeah, a little used, yeah, you have to get used to it. Different, it does all the different types of yarn. Um, you have to be careful not to go too fast or too slow or have too much tension on it. But um, I have a lot of yarn. And my husband, God bless his little heart, um, is always trying to help and I have um, you know the paper towel holders that you put on the counter the stick with the rough and what he would do is he'd take my yarn and he would do this for me he would wind it on to these things and I would put it on top of the paper towel holder like so and then I would crochet and it would just spin and come up. Terrific idea. It is uh, an excellent, excellent idea. Um, it spins nice and easy. These are just uh, paper towel uh, tubes, and he would wind it on by hand. But every time I'd get a new skein of yarn, he would wind it on. Now, down in the basement is where I keep the yarn in my room down there. Um, I must have uh, probably maybe a hundred of these things with different yarns on them. You know, I'll have maybe, like this green one, I've got at least three of this. Not counting what I didn't have wound up. So what I did was I got this yarn winder thing. I'm just reaching my bucket here. Okay. Now this is regular yarn done up in a cake on this yarn winder thing. And a big fat roll of the 
yarn on the tube, I got three of these off of it. Um, this is the same amount, but it is uh, cotton. Nice and easy. Center pull. I have gone through about a fifth of my yarn. Maybe. Yeah, about 20% of my yarn. And in this bucket here, it's when I roll it up, I put it in these little buckets I have to take downstairs. And I see it is a double row. See, there's another row underneath there. Okay, it holds about 24 of these cake, cake things. Now, I have done uh, six. This is my seventh one I'm starting seven buckets already of uh, yarn that has been wound up on this machine. I will do it for a little bit and then I'll go and I'll have to, you know, do something else, you know, around the house. And hubby will sit down and then he'll roll some. Um, it's a little noisy so it's kind of hard to listen to the TV. You can hear the TV. That it's, you know, it's not that you can't. You can. Um, and uh, you ha like I say, you have to be careful because you don't want if you get it going too fast and too much tension, you hear the thing go make noise. But great little gizmo. Anyway, enough of that. That was what one, one of the things I've been doing. So I'm I'm uh, you know I've been busy doing that. It's going to take a while because I have so much yarn, so much yarn. It's pathetic. And it, hubby bought over half of it. So. Another thing was we were at we have a, a store here called Factory Direct, and um, they had this little gadget. You know, you've heard of the rainbow loom that's out makes the elastic band, uh, bracelets for the kids. Or it's all the rage now. I think Margaret said her boy has one and he loves it. So I got one because they were on sale at um, Factory Direct for five dollars, and it's a knockoff. It's not the rainbow loom. It's called the loom something or other. There it is, right there. And I thought, you know what? I'll buy it. I'll try it. If I like it, at this price, I can go back and get more for the grandkids. We'll see what happens. I end up, I couldn't do that anyway because they sold out. So I thought, well, you know, there's got to be more to this thing. See? That's it right there. There's got to be more to this thing than just making bracelets, little rings. So I was on YouTube, uh, excuse me, and uh, they made these uh, cushion things for uh, pencils. And I thought, oh, that's nice, you know. But, and then I thought, you know what? Um, I like the pencil grip on the crochet hook. But the trouble with that is, is uh, they're too big. The crochet hook just slides through it. So what you have to do is you have to wrap elastics or tape or something around your hook to get it fat enough so that this thing will stick to it. But then once you do that, it seems to be stuck. And it's always right over the part where it shows you what size hook you're using. And not all my hooks have the, the things at the end. You know, on the end they'll have, oops, where are we here? They'll have like the number here. Not all of them have it. This one doesn't. And this one does. I don't know if I can get it up close enough to show you there. It says six millimeter. Anyway. So I thought, well, I could try this. So I made these little um, grips, I guess they're called. Little pencil grips. And I made it, and this is what it looks like. Okay. Now, what I do like about this is, see, it slides. So if I have it up where the the size is, see, it's not going to show on my. I use my computer, my laptop camera. So, but anyways. You look at the size, and then you can slide it back up to wherever it is, wherever it feels comfortable. And that is really comfortable. Um, because, you know, you crochet for a long time, your hand starts to get sore. Especially with me, I do a lot of um, 
um, small crochet hooks. Uh, I make uh, doilies and tablecloths and parasols. And, and see, here's this one here is, uh, this is a point, no, 1.65, this one here, millimeter. And I mean, it fits snug, look. And then you just push it back up. It slides back up. These make like take about 10 minutes to make tops on this little gizmo. So for five dollars, it was a heck of a deal. And then you can buy the um, the elastics uh, in, down at the Dollarama or wherever. So those were my two yarn related things that I've been doing. Um, I forgot to bring it over. My husband, a couple of years ago, my husband bought me, um, for Christmas, he got me this little kit. So it says, you want to learn to crochet. You know, he was being nice and he thought I'd like it. And which I did, because it came with a bunch of boy uh, crochet hooks. Uh, colored and it came with a an afghan hook and a book and in the book it showed um, how to do a bunch of stuff how to do uh, hairpin lace and entrelac and there was a bunch of patterns in it and in there there was a pattern for a poncho and I really wanted uh, I uh, I don't like wearing a winter coat we have to here because it gets cold, but I, I just, I do the coat up because I'm cold and then I get overheated, have to undo the coat. Then I get a chill. So you do the coat back up, you know, you know what it's like. And, and you know, it's a huge thing, I guess. So anyways, I had some, I went to the giant tiger and they had some lion brand yarn on sale. Mystic, I think, it was four dollars a skein, and I made myself a poncho. And this is what it looks like. I'm going to see if I can get it turned around so I can show you. I will try it on and see what happens. <clears throat> comes down to a point in the front. Now, the pattern was nice, but I had to tweak it a bit because it goes down in the front. Now, what I want to do is I do want to, um, let's see, it goes in the front and then it comes down just to the bum, top of the bum at the back. And this is to wear over top of my light jacket that I want. I like to wear, uh, but sometimes it gets cold. So what I want to do is put a little uh, flower or something in the front just to give it a little. But it's comfy and it's warm. And uh, I was very impressed with it. It was easy enough to make. It's a rectangle. That's all it is. It's just a rectangle. And then you sew the two ends. You have like, ah, it, I get you turned around here. Okay. This is the, what it, the shape of it when it's crocheted. Okay. And then what you do is you, when you're putting it together, you put it together, you take this end here and you bring it down and you put it here. Like so. See? And then when it goes sideways, you get the front point here. This is your neck part here. And then in the back, it's up here. Now the trouble with this pattern was the neck part was so big that it was falling off my shoulders. I couldn't get it to come in enough. And if I tried moving it up like this, it just didn't look right. It looked funny. So what I did was I sewed 
this part here together to close the neck in. And it seemed to work fine. Nice little pattern. Uh, I'm fortunately I can't post pattern because it's out of a bot book and you know you know how we are about we don't post other people's patterns. And then I thought well I wanted a slouchy hat. So I took I had enough left over and I just made a slouchy. I've always looked at them and I thought well they look nice and this is so warm. You know I won't never get cold with that on. <clears throat> so that's about what I've been doing. Not a lot. Um, I ended up having to get uh, a new printer. Uh, I had a Hewlett Packard and it printed okay, but it used up so much ink. Every time you would turn it on to start a, a, a something to print, uh, it would just like self clean itself. And, and the ink cartridges were very expensive. They were almost like $50 for the two cartridges. And I seemed to be changing them like once every four or five weeks. And I haven't been printing a lot. So I thought, you know, I went back to using a Canon. Uh, this one here is uh, an MG3520. It comes with a, um, a scanner. It has a place to plug in my uh, camera into it. Um, and it's a, a front loading paper. It doesn't have that flip thing in the back where you put the paper in like this and then after a while it kind of droops to the front. This one here is a front loader at the bottom. There's a tray. You put your paper in there and it feeds from the bottom up into the machine. And I, I always did like the front loading uh, paper ones. So. Uh, hubby went down, picked that up because it was on sale. So, and I was very happy with that. Anyways, I seem to be rambling now. I'm very glad to be back. I haven't done a lot. Uh, I have been working on my basement to get my craft room ready down there. It's, I've been, we had a flood back in July. Uh, a lot of the neighbors uh, had basements watered out and we were one of them and our carpet got wrecked and you know, it's not the best basements as it is, but uh, it was enough to make a mess. And with my shoulder being as bad as it was, I couldn't get it cleaned up. So I'm just starting to get to it now. And it is now December. And this happened way back in the beginning of July, end of June, sometime. I think it was end of June, I think. Uh, so I'm slowly getting to that. But anyways, everybody have a great time. I'm wishing you all a very Merry Christmas. If this offends you, I'm sorry, but it's my belief. So I hope you all have a very good holiday, and I'm wishing you the best and well. And hi to everybody in the Cast Off crew. I haven't been around. I miss you. Love you lots, and I'll see you soon. Bye.